The healthcare industry is at war with potentially deadly superbugs. One in 20 patients gets an infection while receiving medical care and thousands of people die. In tonight's health alert, simple steps that could prevent infection and save your life. Our son lived in Colorado. He was a skydiving instructor, a really healthy guy, you know, really vibrant. In September of 2006, life changed instantly for Victoria and Armando Nahum. We get a phone call that he hit the ground uh, at 55 miles an hour. Their 27-year-old son Joshua was in the ICU at a hospital in Colorado fighting for his life. He broke his left femur and he fractured his skull. Josh won that fight and a few weeks later went to physical rehabilitation. Doctors said Josh would be good as new in about a year, but then his condition took a turn for the worse. Six days into his physical rehab, we get a phone call. Gram-negative bacteria had found its way into his cerebral spinal fluid. That infection caused swelling around his brain and paralyzed him. And two weeks later, Josh died. An accident of this sort, it's not acceptable. And it's, and it's not acceptable when you lose a loved one. Somebody that a you- A young man. A, your mm -hmm. child? Mm -hmm. Your children aren't supposed to die before mm -hmm. you. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, an estimated 1.7 million people in the United States acquire infections in healthcare facilities every year, and nearly 99,000 of them die. Dr. Arjun Srinivasan is Associate Director for Prevention of Healthcare Associated Infections at the CDC. Why does it happen? You know, it's a variety of factors. The delivery of medical care is very, very complex. There are a number of things that we need to do for patients to make them well. And in the process of doing some of those things, we can put them at risk for infections. Some of the most common bacteria that wreak havoc on healthcare facilities include MRSA and Clostridium difficile, C. diff for short. And there's a new one, a drug-resistant superbug on the block called CRE. Do we overprescribe antibiotics? Are we creating these bugs that are resistant to antibiotics? We absolutely are. Some studies that have suggested that about half of the antibiotics that we use are either not needed or we're not using them the right way. More than 70% of the bacteria that cause these infections are resistant to at least one of the antibiotics commonly used to treat them. It's almost like they're getting smarter. Yeah, there's a lot of them, and they're always evolving. So anytime we develop a way to combat them, they will uh, eventually evolve a way around it. So it's a constant struggle. But the healthcare industry is working to get ahead of the crisis by tracking infections, reporting them, and most importantly, preventing the spread of infection in the first place. For example, Wellstar Health System uses a robotic cleaning machine that disinfects surfaces with ultraviolet light. No chemicals, no contact. So we are seeing great progress. We just need to see uniform progress. And of course, the first line of defense is simply washing your hands and asking doctors, nurses, and visitors to do the same. Hand washing is fundamental. It is the simplest and most single important thing that we can do to keep ourselves safe and keep those around us safe. Now that you've been admitted to the hospital... To help raise awareness, the Nahums created the Safe Care Campaign. Everyone around you must practice proper hand hygiene. With help from the CDC and Kimberly Clark, they produced a video to show patients how to protect themselves. We have to watch out for ourselves. We only have one body. We only get one life. In light of the tragedy that cut his life short, the Nahums have dedicated their lives to educating others in loving memory of their son, Joshua. It feels like um, our son didn't die for no reason. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't just die and that's the end of him. Um, maybe we can keep other people from experiencing what we experience. There are things you can do to prevent infection. Again, first and foremost, 
wash your hands often. You should always bring someone with you to the hospital or the healthcare facility, a friend or a family member for backup. And if you don't have somebody you can bring, the hospital will supply an advocate for you. And if you do have to undergo surgery, be sure to ask the doctor what the infection rate for your procedure is. For a prevention checklist, visit cbsatlanta.com and look for the story under headlines. You can also watch the safe care video for tips on proper hand hygiene.